know, the really exciting thing about Wiggle High Five start to the season is obviously winning the first World Tour race of the year and having the World Tour jersey is just something extremely special. So I think over the next month now, the, the World Tour races are a real main focus, as they are any year. Um, but the World Tour races are really our focus. But the exciting thing for Wiggle High Five is that Elisa Longo Borghini has the World Tour leader's jersey but she's also very, very close to becoming world number one. And that could happen within the next couple of weeks. So I think that would be really, really special. Well, we saw a, a, a glimpse of Kazi Nuedoma. Uh, she rides for a, a Dutch team uh, with Mariana Voss. And Mariana Voss has been the key star of that team for so many years. But this young rider, Kazi Nuedoma, she's one really to watch out for. So in the first World Tour event in Strada Bianchi, she was second to Elisa Longo Borghini, and I think that she's going to be one of the next really big superstars. Well, this year in women's cycling particularly, there's a real mix of talent over a lot of different teams. So all of the racing is going to be a lot more exciting than say last year, because you've got really strong riders spread out, spread out over a lot of different teams. So I think all the races are going to be super exciting and it's hard to know which ones are going to have the most exciting race, but Tour of Flanders and you know Yorkshire is a big big race, really exciting. But this year there's an addition, additional classics races for women. There's Liège, Bastogne Liège and Stel Gold Race. So the season for women's cycling is it's really going to be full on and a really hot competition. Well Liège, Bastogne Liège and Amstel, which are the, the two new ones on the program. I personally haven't raced raced those so um, in the past, so I'm not sure where the defining moment's going to be, but in general in women's cycling now, you have to have strength in numbers from your team. You can't just be the strongest individual and expect to win a bike race. You need to have numbers at the end of the bike race. So it'll all be about which of the strong teams can have the most number of riders in that final selection coming into the finish. My favourite races of the year and it's, it's quite personal because these races have sportive events and because I'm a retired athlete I really really enjoy the atmosphere of getting out there and also experiencing the courses before my athletes race on them uh, in kind of a race setting in a sportive event. So Tour of Flanders, Yorkshire, Ride London, those events have the sportive events where you can actually get out there and experience the course for yourself. So. I love the atmosphere around those events and they're my favourite ones. The races that have those sportive events are much more attractive to go to because you can go with your own personal focus and you can also enjoy the atmosphere, you can meet some of the athletes. In women's cycling you can have access to the athletes, you walk straight up to their team bus and you can just have a conversation with them and um, you know being there is, is, there's nothing like it and like I said you can do the sportive event, you can make a real uh, weekend of it. So. They're, they're the events that I really love and would recommend that you go to rather than watching on television. If you're going to travel to a race and not watch it on TV, I think Ride London's a great event because it's spectator friendly. There's a, a, some laps that you can see um, the riders coming around. So the other races that are very exciting, like the classics races, are generally not passing the same point too often. So for spectators, I think Ride London's really fantastic.